Rub up your engines! Check it out. Belgian ports are full of unsold Chinese electric vehicles, some of which has been there over a year. So even in Europe, people aren't sold on the idea of buying an electric car. Man, look at them. They're, the port. They're all over the place. The ports of Antwerp and Zeebrug are inundated with Chinese electric cars. So now they got all these cars sitting there, some of them for over a year. Nobody's buying them. They're just sitting there piling up. It really makes you think, okay, think about it. The Germans making electric Volkswagens, all the other companies, they got to compete against this stuff. These tons of them, they're just sitting there waiting to sell them to people. You can make whole fields of them too and have them sitting there. They're supplying, there's demand, right? You can supply whatever you want. If there's no demand for this stuff, you're screwed. And there's no way out of it, right? There's not enough planning and forethought. It's just, oh, here's, let's do this. No matter what, we're going to force this in right? We're going to force it in no matter what. There comes a point when these people should realize, hey, it ain't working. Let's stop trying to do it, right? Look at Apple. They put billions into making an Apple electric car and then they gave up. Well, at least they had enough brains after wasting billions, they gave up with the idea, right? And this, who it looks like it's going to be trillions of dollars worldwide before they'll give up with the idea that people don't want them, doesn't work. You can have them piled up all over the place. And of course, even worse, if they do sell millions of them, nobody knows how to fix them. Then you got another gigantic morass of a bunch of broken electric cars. What do you do with them? Snowy Blitz says, Scotty, I'm looking at getting a 2020 Honda Civic with a two liter engine. How many kilometers do you think it'll go? I've seen them go over 600,000. Yeah, I've seen them go over 500,000 miles, not kilometers. They can last a really long time. That two liter engine is a nice sized engine. You're much better getting a two liter regular engine versus is like a 1.5 turbo, which is going to wear out faster. It's like burning oil earlier because the turbo has all that extra pressure. It's a very good engine. Honda makes great two liter engines and, you know, they're great cars. Now, the only thing I have against some of the modern ones are, from what I've seen, the Civics now are only coming with CVT transmissions. I don't like them. You get that nice two liter engine that's got a lot of power and put it on a CVT, you lose a bunch of the power and then they don't, they're not as much fun to drive. 101 Wildman says, Scott, you hate Jeeps, but Jeeps have the least recalls in the Glad area that I know of. Why do you hate them so much? Okay, well, one, Jeep Gladiators are super expensive. What you got to understand is it's not the numbers, it's the type of recalls, right? I had a customer with one of those, went through two diesel engines in them, absolute piles of crap, right? Now, if you get the gasoline engines, they're much better. The diesels are these Italian piles of junk, right? So it would depend on what engine you get and stuff. But I mean, let's say you bought a diesel one and oh, it doesn't have that many recalls. Yeah, the engine blows up. That's horrendous, right? And they never recalled them for the engines. They just blow up and then they have to give you one if it's under warranty and if not it's too bad right and since first fiat bought them it's kind of bizarre jeeps when they were willie's jeeps they were great then amc bought them then chrysler bought amc got rid of everything but the jeeps all right then Mercedes bought Chrysler. It was Daimler Chrysler. They actually started improving the Jeeps. They were better, right? Mercedes lost so much money. They sold the Fiat, right? Then the quality started to go downhill. Now it's still on us. It's even further downhill. And I stick by my guns. The quality of those things are garbage. I get so many people saying, gee, I got this Jeep. The engine blew up. The transmission blew up within a couple of years. No. I would not buy one. Midge the Hobbit says, Scotty, my dad was a huge fan. He passed away at 2020 at 61. Geesh, I'm still going at 70. He'd always show your videos. My question is, what do you think of the 300 ZX TT? He had one. Those were nice. Let's face the facts. In the United States, sports cars are going down. People aren't buying very many sports cars, right? And Nissan came up with that new version, and it's been a massive failure. Nobody is buying the things, right? And then all the sports guys said, well, we want to make sure it has a standard transmission, la, 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 right? And then the standard transmission ones, they're selling even less. Americans don't drive sports cars. They don't drive standard transmissions. But those 300 ZX TT, so so great cars, fun to drive around it, right? If you didn't put that many miles on it, it's a fun car. Keep it, drive it around, take care of it. They're fun to drive. It's just Americans are all getting in their SUVs and driving around in trucks. They're not into sports cars much anymore. Adrian Cruz says, what's your opinion on the Mazda 3 2010 four-door sedan? It's 14 years old. It's getting a little bit older, but those were decent cars. Now, today, if you said a modern one, they're much better 
because Toyota owns some of them. Their technology is better. They're actually building them a lot better than they used to. I've had people bring me late model Mazdas and I'll say, you know, why'd you buy the Mazda? I said, why didn't you get a Toyota? They said, the Toyota cost a bunch more and I actually like the features in the Mazda better and never been very happy with them and they lasted a long time. Now that's an older one. The main worry you're going to have with that old thing is the transmission. If it's an automatic transmission, baby it because that's the weak point. Now if it's a manual transmission, they're fine. Nothing wrong with that. But back in the past, the Mazda automatic trannies were a little bit weak, right? John Puglitz says, Scotty, what do you think of three-cylinder engines? Are they any good? Okay. There are many three-cylinder engines out there now. Some of them, BMW makes a three-cylinder engine that's a killer. It puts out more horsepower per cc than a Ferrari race car. They're phenomenal. Of course, they also cost like almost 200 grand, right? Now, if you're talking about the three-cylinder crap that GM and people are putting out, they're garbage. I wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole. The reason that four cylinders has become so popular is because they can put out power and still be smooth. The three cylinder engines by their nature are on balance. There's three cylinders. Instead of an even four that can go up and down together, you got three. So they don't run that smoothly. Now, originally most people gave up with them because they didn't put out enough power. But today, of course, they're throwing turbos, GDI, all this crap on them and they can put out a lot of horsepower. But they don't hold up over time because they're too small. You turbocharge them, they wear out, and I see that with the American three-cylinder engines. Don't touch them. They're terrible. They blow up. Doesn't matter who's making them. They don't hold up over time. They just want to make a three-cylinder engine because it's cheaper to make it, right? They got rid of the V8s, went to V6, and then some of them, they're just going to turbo fours, and then threes. It's a mistake. You don't go too small if you have a heavy vehicle. Kurt Dock says, why don't you design a car with all your requirements? It would sell. Well, here's the problem. If you want to build a car from scratch, I know a guy tried doing it, right? And you really have to have about 250 million bucks just to start the thing up. I don't have that kind of money, right? And I want to get involved and in you got to meet the EPA requirements. You got to meet the NHTSA crash specifications. You got to meet all kinds of stuff. And even if you designed something that was right, you'd have to change your design to fit all that stuff, right? So, oh, there's no way I'd even get involved in that. That kind of money and that kind of stuff, whew, you'd have more hassles because, I mean, I've known people that tried to start up companies and they all went down the toilet because they didn't have the money or the ability to get money from other people to actually build something because they found out it's not as easy as snap, snap. You're going to sell a car in the United States that's got to pass all these regulations. And one of the rules is when they test your car, it has to be built on the assembly line by your assembly line workers that you're going to use to test it. So, of course, if you're starting from scratch, that means you got to have a factory up and running before you can even sell cars. And if they say next, then your investment goes down the toilet. That's what kills most of them. They can't make it through the process. Dice Game Network says, Scotty, I just got my wheels rebalanced, but the car still vibrates at 65 to 75. What should I check next? Well, you never know if they balanced your tires right. Because I've seen so many idiots with those machines. So a lot of times, they just don't balance them right. Or your rim is bent or your tires are bad. Now, if it's the front that's shaking, put the front tires in the back, the back tires in the front. If it stops shaking, you know the tires are either poorly made or the guys just didn't balance them right. Right? Now, let's say they balanced them right. Then you got a problem in your front end. Watch my video, how to check out your own car's suspension. And watch it, and you'll see you can jack it up, see if the wheel has play like that when you jack it up or like that. And then see if the ball joint's worn, the tie rod's worn, or the strut's worn. Lots of things can go. But if it's at that speed, it's almost always a speed wobble from either the tires out of bounce, the rims bent, or the idiots just didn't bounce it right at the store. Eric Torrey says, what's your opinion on a Toyota Corolla GR pushing 300 horsepower? Okay, well, here we are. There's a three-cylinder engine. Now, you can get power out of small engines. BMW gets more than that out of their three-cylinder one, right? But at what cost? Now, I've seen some of the Corolla GR engines, people are posting the engines blew up. Of course, the guys get them are going to rag the heck out of it. You can blow anything up eventually if you rev it too high. It's very interesting technology, right? But understand, it's in the Toyota GR racing thing because they're not stupid. They're not going to put out something like that. And if it has problems and they made millions of them, then hey, they're going to have a real bad reputation in their mouth. You put it in a fancy little race car that costs a bunch of money, only a few people are going to buy them and you're not going to have the bad 
press if you do have problems with the thing. So realize that. Toyin Mommer says, Scotty, what's your thoughts on a one liter turbocharged Honda Civic? It's getting too small, don't you think? Yeah, I think it's right too small. One liter. It's a thousand cc's. I have motorcycles with bigger engines and the motorcycles only weigh like 500. Do you really want a car with an engine that small. All the ones I see, the turbocharged pressures in, they're going to wear out faster. You don't want too small of an engine. See, what people are doing, they're going smaller because it's cheaper to make, of course, but to get better gas mileage ratings. You get a one liter turbo and you drive it hard, it's got to rev up so high, you're going to get horrible gas mileage because the engine's spinning too fast. You'd be better with one of Honda's tried and true two liter engines that can run forever and get one without a turbo and it'll go perfectly fine for a really long time. They get too small, then eh, but they're all worried about gas mods ratings, government horse manure, so you know, they'll probably continue to do that stuff. And what's it to them? Once they're out of the warranty period, if they break, hey, they'll sell you another engine or another car. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.